Chair now recognizes Ms. Bobert from Colorado. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Goffman, uh, are the EPA's rules to regulate light, medium, and heavy-duty vehicles economically feasible for middle class and hardworking American families living month to month and struggling with inflation? Uh, thank you for that question. Um, it's a question that we take very seriously as well. And we've designed these rules to work hand in hand with the plans that we know that industry has to uh, introduce and market clean. Mr. Goffman, what, what is the average price of a new con combustion uh, engine vehicle compared to um, the average price of a new electric vehicle? Uh, I don't know the exact dollars. I know that today um, the EVs may be more expensive, mm -hmm. but these rules. So the average price of a traditional um, uh, internal combustion engine is was. $45,600, while the average price of an electric vehicle was $61,800. And if these um, unfavorable rules are finalized, your own estimates um, that, um, that I've seen um, suggest 67% of all new cars sold in the U.S. will need to be fully electric by 2032. Now, how much did the average price of an electric vehicle increase by last year? I don't know. But so it's 22 percent okay. um, from May of 2022 to May of 2023. It's increased 22 percent. Um, so it's not going down in price with these electric vehicles. Um, we're, we're seeing an increase. And um, and by your own estimates, um, the, the um, technological costs of this proposal could reach $280 billion. Um, that's increasing manufacturing costs by $1,200 per vehicle. Um, Mr. Goffman, are you aware that in, um, in temperatures under 20 degrees Fahrenheit, electric vehicles lose nearly half of their charge in their batteries? Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, so in Colorado, where we rely on four-wheel drive vehicles uh, to get around in winter, uh, many of these vehicles will be regulated out of existence under these proposed rules. Uh, how much does an electric vehicle um, battery cost to replace? Uh, I don't know offhand, but you're putting your finger on important issues, which is exactly why the strategy reflected in these rules is to give industry years of lead time. Well, well you're regulating um, an industry out of existence um, here, and, and we're seeing that it's less re reliable. In Colorado, um, it's, it's very common to have temperatures under 20 degrees Fahrenheit, and these, these batteries will, not, will lose some of their charge. Now, um, I have between $5,000 and $20,000 um, to replace an electric vehicle's batteries. And prolonged ex exposure to temperatures under 20 degrees um, can also compromise the electric vehicle's battery performance as much as 41%. Now, how do you recommend that hardworking families who are struggling to get by um, absorb these additional costs associated with electric vehicles? Well, our projection is that by the time these rules go into effect, um, both the industry and uh, investments like those made in the IRA and the Oh, so we're just going to print more money to, to make up for that. So, I mean, we, we're seeing a 22% increase in one year for the cost of electric vehicles. Um, even the tires on electric vehicle wear 20% faster. Um, I, I, I don't think that the um, average American taxpayer is looking for another uh, federal government bailout for tires. I mean, um, over over half, Amer half of Americans have less than $1,000 in their savings account, and you're wanting them to spend more money on vehicles. Um, where the price is increasing, um, it'd be at 41% higher at risk for having to change out a battery, um, tires that wear 20% um, faster um, than it, your average car. Now, please name two domestic mines, domestic mines that you support, Mr. Goffman, and that are critical to helping produce the amount of minerals necessary for the electric vehicles you've been praising today. Well, the information I have is that in just under a year since the IRA was passed, uh, 75 new facilities have been uh, started to... Domestic uh, mines? Including domestic mining. Can you name any? 
uh, that you support? And I'd be happy to get behind. So um, the Rosemont mine and the, the Resolution Copper mine are two mines in Arizona uh, blocked by the environmental extremists and the federal bureaucrats that would produce massive amounts of copper in the United States. The Biden administration has also blocked the Twin Metals mine in northern Minnesota. And uh, Democrats... Um, on the Natural Resources Committee oppose all domestic mining. And if we don't mine for these minerals necessary, where are they going to come from? The 40,000 children mining for cobalt in the Congo with their bare hands in these China-owned mines, and then we buy these um, products from China and somehow feel virtuous about ourselves while they're building some 200 coal-fired energy plants. These rules do not benefit the hardworking Americans that I represent, and um, I, I hope that you would reconsider them and the costs that um, the American family is going to have to absorb because of them. My time has expired, and I yield. Chair, recognize.